바쁜 일정을 소화하며 승승장구했던 한 여인은 갑자기 모든 걸 내려놔야만 했습니다. 생각지도 못한 나이, 40대 초반에 찾아온 알츠하이머 때문이었죠. 그녀의 이름은 데보라입니다. 당시 공연 프로듀서이자 변호사였던 그녀에게 나타난 첫 증상은 안면 인식 장애. 많은 이들을 상대해야 하는 직업이었기에 얼굴을 알아보지 못하는 건 공포였습니다. I didn't at the time know that that was an early sign of Alzheimer's, and I also thought I was too young to be getting these early signs. So instead, I just sort of compensated for my problem and would laugh it off. I would say I dealt with facial blindness for about seven years, and I think it just got progressively worse. So then, as my 40s progressed, I started to have other symptoms that suggested my brain wasn't working as well as it used to. So I felt a lot slower in my thinking. I felt fuzzy, but I didn't know. That meant that I was getting Alzheimer's because I hadn't learned yet that the symptoms come on 20 or 30 years before you're diagnosed. 그녀의 뇌는 계속 악화됐습니다. 해야 할 말을 잊기 시작하며 이해력도 떨어지고 무언가 읽고 들어도 기억하지 못했다고 하는데요. 심지어 변호사로 활동하며 구사했던 화려한 어휘도 수많은 서류를 작성해냈던 타이핑 속도도 현저히 느려졌다고 합니다. 단순 노화가 아닐 수 있다는 걸 인지한 건몇년후 가족력 때문이었습니다. So my grandmother had Alzheimer's and died from that, and my father, who was a neurologist, also had Alzheimer's and he died six months ago from it. And he, it for him and and my grandmother, it came on in their late 60s um, when they got diagnosed. So they probably had symptoms 20 years before it, but we didn't know. So kind of like with me. 보통 유전적으로 생기는 치매는 적은 편이지만 알츠하이머성 치매는 가족용 영향이 있습니다. 특히 부모나 형제 중한 명이 치매일 경우 15% 이상 발병 가능성이 높아진다는 연구 결과도 있는데요. 관심이 필요한 겁니다. 혈액 분석으로 몸 상태를 체크한 결과. 치매 유전자 외에도 많은 부분의 밸런스가 무너진 걸 발견했습니다. 특히 높았던 인슐린 저항성. 데보라처럼 치매 유전자가 있는 경우에 당을 적절히 처리하지 못한다는 걸 보여준 결과였습니다. With Deborah, one of the things that has been an issue, the hormones weren't perfect. She had evidence of being exposed to mycotoxins. So she had high activation of the innate immune system. So therefore, we need to remove her exposure, we need to detox, and we need to make sure that this is coming online. And another good example would be fasting insulin. Doctors often don't check your fasting insulin, but in fact, it's very important for your cognition. So that's why we want to do these atypical blood tests. 복용 중이던 알츠하이머 치료제 외에 호르몬 불균형, 독성 물질에 따른 높은 염증 반응, 그리고 인슐린 저항성을 해결하기 위한 개선 프로토콜이 시작됐습니다. 그중 식단 변화는 필수였죠. 채소 중심의 건강식으로 바꾼 건데요. 사라진 밀가루와 설탕, 가공식품 대신 야채와 채소가 채워졌습니다. 하지만 무너진 균형을 되돌리기엔 식습관만으로는 충분치 않았습니다. 조금 더 빨리 효과적인 진행을 위해 보충제 섭취가 필요했는데요. 물론 대보라 맞춤 처방이었습니다. So just to give you an idea, so these would be some of the ones that I'll take each day. I take magnesium at night. I take curcumin, which is like turmeric, so it's a very good anti-inflammatory. Um, so it, there are, I have a lot of sort of disbalanced um, metabolism, mm -hmm. and so maybe someone else might be really good at absorbing their vitamins from their food, but my blood work showed that I was actually deficient in a lot of things. There is a gene, you know, that I also have called MTHFR, so if you have it, like I do, You're weaker in being able to do that. So I don't absorb the B vitamins well. 
I don't absorb other, you know, some of these other nutrients well. So I think that can make things probably worse. The supplement requirement is shrinking and the nutrition part is growing. As we realize more, simple example, you can take probiotics and prebiotics as pills or you can take things like kimchi, very good probiotics, or fermented beets or things like that, and then prebiotics like jicama. So these work even better when you take them as food than when you take them as supplements. 또한 보충제는 혈액을 통해 뇌로 들어갈 수 없기 때문에 뇌에 직접적인 영향을 줄수 없습니다. 하지만 체내 결핍으로 발생하는 무언가가 뇌에 악영향을 주는 건 막을 수 있게 되는데요. 몸의 건강으로 뇌 건강을 지키는 방법인 셈입니다. 그리고 수면 장애가 있던 데보라에겐 잠자기 전 단식도 처방됐습니다. So I started with a 12-hour fast each night, which really isn't such a big deal. And then I, as I got used to it, I went up to 13 or 14 hours of the fast. So what that means is that when I stop eating in the evening, let's say it's 7 o'clock that I finish dinner, I don't eat again until 9 the next morning. Sleep is a part of the protocol to get 7 or 8 hours of deep sleep, and that's hard for me. Not just sleep restores it. You're actually rebuilding the brain. Sleep has two functions. One is to, to help memories in code. The second is detoxing. When you have good sleep, it actually eliminates inflammatory products. It eliminates ox oxidation. It actually reduces amyloid. When you have bad sleep, you're other. So sleep is critical. But there are unrecognized sleep disorders that can be problematic. For example, sleep apnea is a very common disorder where people snore, and when they're snoring, they're not getting enough oxygen to the brain, and there are treatments for that. 그리고 그녀가 하루도 빠짐없이 하는 건 운동입니다. 환자 나이와 상황에 맞게 즐기며 지속할 수 있는 운동이 처방되었습니다. 데보라에게는 강사와 함께하는 실내 자전거였습니다. 그리고 프로토콜 시작 5개월쯤. 이 모든 것이 복합적으로 일어나며 개선되기 시작했습니다. So that's around the five, six month mark. All these other changes started to happen, and it felt, what's strange about it is it felt like it came on over a period of a month, but like something was peeling off of my brain, that I felt sharp and that I felt present. I feel like I can function like I did, you know, back when I was in my 20s and 30s. So first thing to get better was the first thing that I lost, which was facial recognition. <laughs> 안면 인식 장애를 시작으로 많은 것이 좋아졌습니다. 몸으로 느끼는 것 외에도 실제 수치상의 변화가 있었는데요. 인식이는 검사 결과 모든 항목이 눈에 띄게 개선됐습니다. 하지만 실제 몸 상태를 나타내는 혈액 검사로 나아진 걸 확인하기까지는 약 2년의 시간이 걸렸는데요. 많은 항목 중에서도 눈에 띄는 게 있습니다. 당 수치가 높으면 뇌세포를 지원하지 못하게 되는 인슐린 수치가 좋아졌고 헤모글로빈 A1C는 당뇨 관련 항목으로 이 역시 정상 수준으로 돌아왔습니다. 이외에도 뇌 위축을 일으키는 혈관성 위험인자 호모시스테인도 6 이하로 안전범위에 들어왔죠. 비타민 B군의 결핍하고 호모시스테인의 축적 이것이 이제 직접 연관이 돼 가지고 이세개세 가지의 혈관에서의 그 농도 
수입과 치매에 어, 상당한 영향을 미친다는 게 많이 보고되고 있습니다. So we don't call it cure. What we say is it reverses cognitive decline. That we can show. They're declining. Now they come up and they stay up. So it does reverse cognitive decline. It also works to prevent cognitive decline. 프로토콜을 시작한 지 올해로 5년 차. 정상 범위의 수치를 얻었지만 그녀의 프로토콜은 계속될 예정입니다. You can't stop it. So people have asked me, "Oh, you're all better. You can stop now." I'm like, "No. No, this is my life. Like this is I have to do this so that I don't um, get dementia. I have to. So I will um, I will never stop." Billions and billions of dollars have been spent on developing a drug. Our belief is that the drugs will be important. on the background of the program so you use the drug to cover one or two holes very well then you use the program to cover the other 34 or 35 holes where you can actually get a better result for your drug so that that's what we hope will be in the future that there will be a combination of these two 새롭게 시도되고 있는 알츠하이머 개선 프로토콜 불행하기만 한줄 알았던 알츠하이머에 작지만 가능성이 열리고 있는 겁니다 played piano as a teenager and I put music up and I was going to play and I couldn't read the notes and I couldn't remember the bass clef at all and I was looking at the treble clef and I knew a few notes but that was it and I put it away I didn't do anything after that two years later and I was just curious and I put music up and for the first time I could read the notes it was really crazy because I hadn't taught it to myself it just came back and then my husband and my daughter One of my sons came in and they're like, "Who's playing the piano?" I was like, "It's me. I can do it again."